Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Professor Rhett Smith for ProtonGuru.com. We're going through Lesson 6.1, starting our discussion of carbonyls. And in this lesson we need to discuss how to name carbonyl compounds so that we can discuss them by their names, not always having to draw structures. You probably remember that if we're naming alkenes that also have alcohols in their structure, that the alcohol will get the higher priority for the lowest number along the parent chain. We're trying to figure out which way to number the compound. So above the alkene is the alcohol. The alcohol would get the lower number if there was some sort of competition between an alkene and an alcohol along a parent chain for the lowest number. Now there are carbonyl functional groups where the carbonyl, if you remember from lesson 1.4, is the unit with a CO double bond. There are several of these functional groups. All of these groups we're going to talk about in our nomenclature lesson have a higher priority than the alcohol for getting the lowest number along the parent chain. Right above the alcohol in the priority scheme would be the ketone. Remember that the ketone is the name of the functional group where you have a carbonyl that has a carbon attached to each of the two sides. The aldehyde is a little bit higher in priority. And remember that its structure is very similar to a ketone very much the same type of reactions that can be done with the aldehyde and the ketone. And the aldehyde has an H on one side instead of the carbon that the ketone has on both sides. Next, we have the amides or carboxamides. The amides, of course, have the carbonyl unit where there's some carbon base unit on one side, but on the other side is a nitrogen, which could have hydrogens or carbons attached to it. Above that is the acid chloride. The acid chloride has the same carbonyl unit common to all these other ones right here, but it has a chloride, as the name suggests, as its sort of unique site. Above that would be the ester. You probably remember that the ester has that carbonyl unit, like all the others, but it has an OR group, or that R is some sort of carbon-based group. And then at the very, very top, our highest priority functional group for getting the lowest number on the parent chain, the last suffix ending, is the carboxylic acid. Very much like the ester, but you have this acidic hydrogen here instead of the R that's on the ester group. And this is our hierarchy for naming these. We're not going to go through naming every single type of these functional groups. We'll go through most of these here. Now the naming of ketones is done very similarly to what you do for alcohols, but the alcohols have the all ending and ketones have the own ending. So I want to number this to give the ketone the lowest possible number, right? So it's going to be a two to name where the ketone is in the parent chain. You have a six carbon long chain. So it's a two hexanone. Now, outside of the parent chain, all we have is this bromine at position 4. So in front of the 2 hexanone sort of core, we have 4 bromo. The last part of the name that is important would be the label of configuration because we've got this chiral center right here. We can assign this as S-4-bromo-2-hexanone. Dash 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 now, I mentioned on the previous page that this ketone functional group has priority over the OH for getting the low number in the parent chain and for getting the last suffix at the very end of the name. So if we go ahead and name this, we have some sort of own, the ketone, and we have the seven carbon long chain, so it's a heptanone. But it also has the OH, so we need to incorporate the alcohol in the name somehow as well. Well, we're going to have to name the OH group instead of putting an all suffix, right? We're going to use the own suffix. Instead, we'll name it as a substituent hydroxy. So this is some type of 4-hydroxy, 2-heptanone. But that's not all we have. You see that also coming off of the parent chain, in addition to the ketone and the hydroxy group, we have a methyl at position 6. So we need to put 6-methyl in there as well. Well, 4-hydroxy is alphabetically before. Hydroxy is before the methyl. So the methyl has to come in after the hydroxy. Well, we're still not done because we have a chiral center at that carbon with the OH on it. This site's not chiral, right, because there are two methyl groups. And we have the OH group as the number one priority, number two, number three priority. We have the 
R configuration, R four hydroxy six methyl two heptanone. Now the aldehyde is the next one we're going to talk about. It's got a higher priority for the numbering and for the use of the last suffix in the name of the compound compared to the ketone. And what we do is we use the al ending instead of the all ending we use for alcohols. And another thing you'll notice is that because the aldehyde by definition has an H attached to the same carbon as the double bond O, well the aldehyde functional group required bonds themselves. They take up three of the bonds to that carbon. That means that the aldehyde is always at the end of a linear chain. So we don't need to put a number to tell the reader where the aldehyde is, knowing that it has to be at the end. So we're going to give that the number 1, unless we had a functional group with an even higher priority. So if I start there and number this chain according to the other conventions we learned way back in part 1 of the primer 1, we have the al ending. It's a 6 carbon long chain, so it's a hexanal. We have two methyl groups coming off, so dimethyl has to be in the name somewhere. Methyl comes alphabetically after ethyl, and we have the ethyl group there. So putting these things all in the right order and numbering the ethyls at 4, 3 and 5 have the methyl groups, we get the final name of 4-ethyl-3,5-dimethyl hexanal. We only encounter kind of a problem from that sort of simple naming scheme when we have the aldehyde group that's not on the parent chain, as in this cyclic structure, right? We can have the aldehyde coming off of number 1, but the parent chain is the ring. It doesn't include the carbon of the aldehyde. So what do we do in a case like that? Well, when named as a substituent, the aldehyde is called carbaldehyde or formyl. So there are two ways that you could name this compound I drew here. You can call it cyclopentane carbaldehyde. Again, we don't need a number on a cyclic compound if there's only one substituent. Or we can call this formyl cyclopentane. So here I give you an example where I have an aldehyde, an alcohol, and a ketone all in the same molecule. Now the highest priority of these is the aldehyde. It's got to have the highest priority. So the end of the word is going to be al, the end of the name. We have to name the alcohol and the ketone as substituents. Well, I told you before the alcohol, when you have to name it as a substituent, is called hydroxy. The ketone as a substituent can be called either keto, like I did here, or oxo. So let's start by filling in the base name. It's a five carbon long chain with an aldehyde. It's a pentanal. Now at carbon two is hydroxy and carbon four we're going to call it keto. Well H comes before the K in the alphabet so the hydroxy has to be listed first. So this should be a two hydroxy four keto. So the full name, since there are no other substituents, would be two hydroxy four keto pentanal. Now even higher priority than the aldehydes is the acid chloride. Now the acid chloride uses the ending oil chloride. So you have the parent chain with the oil at the end and then you've got a space in the word chloride. Now the acid chloride is like the aldehyde always at the end because the functional group itself, the three bonds required to be that functional group, take up three of the four bonds of the carbon. So it has to be at the end. So we're going to use sort of the, we don't need a number to tell where it is like we did with the aldehyde. So if we take a look at this, we know this is number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We actually have two chiral centers at positions three and five, two substituents, a chloro and a methyl. So the chloro comes alphabetically before methyl. We're going to list, leave a little room for the configurations. We'll say it's five chloro always putting dashes between the words and the numerals. 3-methyl. The carbon chain is 7 units long, so hept and is the parent chain part. Oil, so put the O-Y-L, heptanoil, and then there's a space, chloride. All right, so 5-chloro-3-methyl-heptanoyl chloride. We are now left with the last task of assigning the configurations, two carbons 3 and 5. We're able to name pretty complicated molecules now. Even if we have an acid chloride, an alcohol, a ketone, and an aldehyde, all in the same molecule, all we need to do when we see a molecule like this is say, which of those functional groups has the highest priority? Here, it's the acid chloride. 
So using the highest priority functional group we number, find the longest we can. So it's some type of heptanoyl chloride, just like the one up here. So we can fill that in as our parent structure. But we're going to have to put substituents on. We're going to have to put a 2-hydroxy in the name. We're going to have to put a 4-keto in the name. And this is a substituent, this formula group, or this carbaldehyde. Let's call it a formula in this example. So 5 formula. And we even have this substituent here coming off the parent chain. This is 5-ethyl. Now the way that you put all these substituents in, remember, is to alphabetize them. So our alphabetically first is the ethyl group. So we will start by writing 5-ethyl. We've got that. The next alphabetically is the formula group. So we go 5 formula. Next is the hydroxy group. And then we have the 4-keto. And then we have to string all of that onto heptanoyl chloride. So this will be all one word, but I have to continue because it's so long. I wouldn't have a dash between keto and heptanoyl. I would keep it all one word like it appeared. But very long word. So heptanoyl chloride. Well, we're still not done. We have successfully filled in all those functional groups and all those substituents, but we have one chiral center at carbon two. So we need to fill in the one, two, three. So it's S, there's only one chiral center here, so we don't need numbers to tell them where it is. S, five ethyl, five formal, two hydroxy, four keto heptanoyl chloride. Now with esters, we have to consider something else we didn't have to think about with the other functional groups we talked about. The ester always has this structure. So we're going to have to give the compound an ending to say it's an ester, but this R group could be a methyl group, could be an ethyl group, could be a benzene ring, all kinds of different things out here. So we need to tell people it's an ester and which group is attached to the O that makes it an ester. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to look at the non-carbonyl oxygen and the group that comes off of it, that R group I was just talking about. We put the name of that group right out front of the whole name. All right. And then at the end of the name, the suffix we use at the end of the parent chain, we use O8. Now, like the aldehyde and the acid chloride, remember, the ester is always at the end of the molecule because, again, the bonds that make it an ester are three of the four bonds to the carbon. So the carbon can only grow a chain in one direction away from that. So that's going to be one. So in this case, we have only a four carbon long chain. So we have to put the name of the R group on the O out front of the name. This happens to be an isopropyl group. And then this is a butane, but it's an ester, so butanoate. And then we have a 3-methyl. So we have 3-methyl butanoate, but isopropyl sits out front of that whole thing. So make this correction. This should say an ester has priority over all the other carbonyl functional groups if you have an older version of the lecture guide before it's corrected. The ester has priority over all the carbonyl functional groups we're going to talk about here other than the carboxylic acid. So even when we have a ketone, an alcohol, different things in the chain along with the ester, ester is going to get the number one. So this is a six carbon long chain with an ester in it. So we have the methyl group that's going to go out front of the entire name, methyl. We don't need a number for that because by definition it's on the O of the ester. And we have a hexanoate, but we have to include the substituents. We have to say 5-keto or 5-oxo and 6-hydroxy. So it should be alphabetically H before K should be methyl, 6-hydroxy, 5-keto, hexanoate. Now for the carboxylic acids, it will again sit at the end of the molecule. It has the highest priority of all the functional groups we're going to talk about. So I'm going to give this the number 1, and that 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the suffix you use is oic space acid. So this is 6 carbons long, for example. It's a hexane, but hexanoic acid. We're going to have to put a 3 hydroxy substituent in the name. We're going to need a 5-methyl in the name. 
and we're going to have to indicate that we have the R configuration at the chiral center. The label configuration goes in the very front, so R. Next are substituents, hydroxy before methyl, so R, 3 hydroxy, 5 methyl. And then without a space going right into the parent chain, it's a hexane, but instead of just putting the E for an alkane, it's hexanoic acid. All right, now you have the full name for this pretty complicated looking molecule with the chiral center. And without talking through the whole thing, we can now talk about naming molecules that have a bunch of functional groups in them like this one. This has the carboxylic acid, alcohol, aldehyde, alkene, and the ketone, all in the same structure. And I've identified the parent chain by realizing that of all these functional groups, you have the highest priority substituent as the carboxylic acid, meaning that the OH group would be named as a hydroxy. The aldehyde group would be named as a formyl. The ketone would be incorporated as a keto. You could use oxo. Now the alkene, if there's an alkane, you say hexanoic acid, right? If there's an alkene, you put ene, still using oic acid for the end. So the identity of this molecule as an alkene is indicated to the reader by the ene right there. And you put the number right before it to say that alkene starts at number six. To complicate things even more, there are two chiral centers at two and four. We have to indicate the configurations there as well. And that's as far as we're going to go in these lessons for learning how to name carbonyl compounds.